Good morning. This is Crystal Woods with Seasons in the Vine, and it's Fresh Friday. And I just want to thank you for joining me on this journey of preparing for the second coming of Christ by understanding deception, by understanding false gospels, by being able to identify a wolf in sheep's clothing, a false prophet, a false apostle, a false teacher. I mean, these aren't new concepts because they're they were writing about them 2,000 years ago when the New Testament canon was being developed and written by inspiration of Holy Spirit. So these are just things we have to recall. Understanding our Bible, knowing the God of the universe, Yahweh Elohim, knowing His Son, Jesus Christ, understanding and intimately being aware of His Spirit, is vital in these days and in these times. The earth is groaning, the birth pains have begun, and we need to be prepared, we need to be vigilant, we need to have our eyes open, we need to be aware of what deception tastes like, smells like, looks like. We need to be aware of when we are hearing something that sounds like Jesus, but isn't just Jesus. I want to propose to you that, and I, I do believe it's biblical, but I want to propose to you that anything that adds or subtracts to the gospel message of Jesus Christ is anti-Christ, is against Christ. That's all what that means is anti-Christ, the spirit of anti-Christ. And so anything that is even close to Jesus or that we add to the gospel or we take away from the gospel is actually not of the Spirit of God. This is where testing the spirits is really important. I'm gonna give you a tangible example today of an encounter that I had with someone who was arguing with me about a particular part of the gospel. And I had to really think, because it was one of those moments where I had to test, like, is this demonic? Is this mental illness? Is this just human rebellion? What is going on here? What spirit or character trait is at work here? Because that's how I'm gonna to have to defeat this particular battle. And so I'm gonna get into that in just a minute, but I wanna go back into anything less than the full gospel of Jesus Christ, which we find in scripture is antichrist. I'm gonna review the gospel at the end of this message because you must know what you believe. You must be able to defend it. You must be able to hear if there is something else being added or something else being taken away. Because if it's not the full gospel, then it is anti-Christ. It's against Jesus. Okay, so we are going to cover, just like with deception, a plethora of different things like holiness, discipleship, um, the sinner's prayer, whether that's even a valid thing, low view of Jesus, the finished works of Jesus, so that's a high view of Jesus, what he's actually accomplished. We're gonna be talking about the new creation, um, and we're gonna be talking about lines being in the sand, and the humanity of Christ, and the deity of Christ, and the worship of saints, and Mary, and I'm gonna cover these things. It, however the Lord leads, um, maybe some will be clumped together, maybe some will be separate weeks because of the extent of what we're covering. But today, we're going to focus on the basis of the gospel and really getting that foundation down so that when you're hearing something else, I mean, guys, whew, in the days of social media and YouTube, we have access to thousands of pastors and preachers across the globe. We must be able to listen and know if they are legitimate teachers, apostles, and prophets, if they are teaching a legitimate gospel that is biblically sound, not just what we want to hear, not just what tickles our fancy. And so you can tell like today's message, I have an intensity about myself because we're talking about the saving work of Jesus. If we get the saving work of Jesus wrong, we lose its power in our lives and in the lives of those that we are dealing with. It's gotta be the full gospel. 
the whole thing. It's got to be. Or it is against Jesus. It is a ploy of the enemy. And he's been working, you know, right from the beginning of when the church was founded. Why do you think we see the apostles writing these letters of correction at times? We studied Colossians this year, right? And Paul was addressing very specific false gospels, false teachings, already in the church, already in the first century, just years, decades after Jesus died. The enemy was at work with planting something different than the real gospel. Okay, so Hope you're excited. Here we go. I'm going to start with the story and then we're going to cover the gospel backwards. So I was in church and um, there was, I was totally focused on the message. It was an awesome message. Believe it or not, it was about the gospel. So it's funny how all that played in. And you have to know like what I'm sharing in these messages, a lot of them have actually been lessons I've learned in just the last year truly, or two years or three years. Like when we get into testing spirits and stuff like that, like that's gonna be more of what happened in my family. And so like they're all very personal from just this little window of time. And now the Lord is like, okay, let's do this. Let's teach people what you've been studying privately and alluding to for all of these years. Let's begin to crack this open. <clears throat> so I wanna make that clear. Like it's not specific towards any one thing other than what I've actually seen with my own eyes and and heard with my own ears and actually had to move into and respond to so like eyewitness stuff um so there was this woman at at my church and i go to zeal church york and um i'm sure a delightful lady but something was going on that day <laughs> with her and um, she began to get highly agitated as my pastor was preaching the gospel and he kept saying the wrath of god had been poured out on jesus jesus took the wrath of god all of the wrath of god and she was visibly moving wiggling her feet, stomping her feet, moving her hands, slamming her Bible shut. And at first I didn't notice at all because I was focused. But what one thing the Lord has really taught me is to be very aware of him. Even when the word is being preached, be aware of what he's doing in the room or what's happening in the room. And so Holy Spirit immediately quickened me to focus and look. And I just started observing and I saw, okay, like I, I believed there was a demonic manifestation happening and manifestation. So let's get this word because the new age movement and prosperity gospel and all of that have just really tarnished a word that's actually biblical. Manifestation just means revealed. So a, demo, a demon or a demonic activity was being revealed in our very presence. And a few people were beginning to get disturbed around her as she was vocalizing and moving her body in a way that was disruptive of the sermon. And I'm really protective of things like that. Like we're here to see the gospel preached and anyone who doesn't, any one or any spirit really, who doesn't want to come into alignment with the assignment that my pastor had that day to preach the word, to preach the gospel, like we're gonna have, we're gonna have to have a meeting. We're gonna to have to have a chat. <laughs> it doesn't happen often, but it does happen and it cannot be tolerated because only God's assignments are what we're going to allow to happen. That's where authority comes in. And so I just watched and I listened. I watched and I listened. And she was just growing more and more agitated and he was just really preaching the gospel. It was beautiful. But now at this point, I have to turn that off and I have to focus on what Holy Spirit is saying. So he said, get up out of your seat, go to the back. So I went to the back and I just started praying <laughs> and I said, I just spoke out in a whisper, I see you. And I was talking to this spirit, this assignment, this other, whatever you want to figure. I was speaking to that, not the woman, to that. And I said, I see you and this isn't going to work enough in just a whisper. And she exploded all of a sudden screaming, where is this in the Bible? And I just came up, grabbed a good friend because we always go out two by two at my church because that's what Jesus did. And I said, um, ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to come with me. And we, we took her outside to then have a conversation and to pray over her and to see what the agitation was. So while I was talking with her, and I share this because as you walk in the truth, when you encounter someone, 
who is not receiving the truth and who does not want to receive the truth, you may see some pretty strong resistance at times and it may surprise you. It may even be from people you would think would never have that antichrist tendency. But if they are being deceived, you may very well see it. And that's what we were having here. Like she may have, have known the Lord at one time or had a love for the Lord. I don't know how all this went down. All I know is she entered in, there was a disruption. She, she The intent was to stop our pastor from being able to preach. And when she vocalized out loud to the congregation, this isn't in the Bible, I knew at that time she needed to be removed to another place. And so I'm talking to her outside with a good friend and he might be watching. Hi, Micah. And um, we were sharing like, what what's going on? Why are you so upset? And she's like, the wrath of God, that's not in the Bible. Like Jesus didn't take the wrath of God. That's not in the Bible. That's Where is that in the Bible? And she was just really, really agitated. And I was like, it, it, it's absolutely in the Bible. Like Jesus took on the cup of God's wrath. Jesus took on all of the sins of the world. He's the propitiation of our sins. Like, and, and she was just not having it. And there were some other things going on. Um, and we were able to pray for her and, and try to love on her, but also like this is not going to be tolerated because this actually is in the word of God. This is part of the gospel. So what was happening then is this dialogue I was having with the Holy Spirit. And there were some other things he revealed that are not pertinent to this message today. But I was just, it, sometimes you just have to sit you, and stop responding to the noise coming at you and just sit with the Lord. And it, you might look weird in a conversation. You may look disobedient or, I don't know, just ignorant or rude. But it's more important you listen to him then then you care what people think about what's going on because your motive is pure you want to honor the lord and so i was just listening and i was like oh this is an attack on the gospel i discerned then the holy spirit was saying that's the spirit that's at work it's the spirit that says the gospel isn't the gospel mm. and when that happened i was like game over not going to work because if you take away the wrath of God being poured out on Jesus, then we are not forgiven. There is no hope. No one is saved. The work was not finished. Do you see what I mean? So like you have to really listen when certain denominations even, we're going to get into different things about how people teach the new creation and new life in Christ. And we're going to talk about brokenness and sinfulness and just all kinds of stuff. We are going to open that up as the Lord leads. But you have to be very aware of what the gospel actually says because if any part of it is taken away, it is a false gospel. It is a false gospel at that point. And so if I would have agreed with her and she would have been able to speak out loud in our assembly over the pastor, which would not have happened. Like that is not going to be okay. It was out of order. That's another thing. That's out of order. That's not Holy Spirit doing that because Holy Spirit always works in order and there's an authority in the church and obviously the pastor is the highest authority in that church and if he's speaking, no one should be interrupting him. That's out of order. I can test that because I know the Bible and I know how Holy Spirit works. And so I can test that in real time and say, this is not a spirit of God this, or the spirit of God. This is a spirit of something else. And if it's not God, it's antichrist. It's the enemy. It's something outside of the bounds of what we should allow to be part of a biblical gathering of the saints. So wrath of God, she was trying to diminish that that happened at all. Like not even diminish. She was just saying it didn't happen. And that was where we had to end the conversation because it did indeed happen. And I'm not going to come to your side on this because I, the gospel is that Jesus took the wrath of God onto himself for us. And I'm going to give you some scriptures that talk about that. And so let me make sure I closed all that out. This is me listening to Holy Spirit. Okay, that feels good. So let's go through a couple of scriptures because that's gonna be really important. Let's go through a couple of scriptures. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them. There's a ton that talk about like what Jesus actually did and then we're gonna cover the gospel really quick. So Romans 5, 9, since therefore we have been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. So like we are saved 
by him, justified by his blood from the wrath of God. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Okay, so if you're not believing in the Son, you have the wrath of God remaining on you. Um, let's see, First, oh, that was John 3, 36. First John 4, 10, and, and this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins, total covering, total atonement. He took on what belonged to us. 1 John 2, 2, he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. But God showed his love for us, Romans 5, 8, 9, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then it goes on to repeat what I said at the beginning. We are justified by his blood. If not, the wrath of God remains on us, Romans 5, 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace now, not wrath between us. Let me see what else I got. Isaiah 53, 10 through 11, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many be accounted as righteous, for he shall bear their iniquities. That's the wrath of God. That's the sin of God. That's what was poured out. Jesus covered all of that. <clears throat> surely Isaiah 53 4 5 surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him not stricken and smitten by God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and by his stripes we are healed and so once again that's the wrath of God um, I think we're good on that area I don't want to overwhelm you but those are just some of the scriptures then Let's talk about when Jesus is in the garden and he's saying, Father, like remove this cup from me. Well, cup in Jewish language, in an understanding of this time, a cup represent this cup of judgment. It represented the wrath of God. So overwhelmingly, we know that the gospel includes Jesus taking on the sins of the world and the full wrath of God for all the disobedience of all humans before, now, and the ones to come. All of it, he covered everything. So for someone to say that Jesus did not take the full wrath of God and that there was more that needed to occur, that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those who have been saved are no longer living under the wrath of God. There are things in Ephesians that cover this. There are things in Colossians that cover this. Like you, This is why your Bible is very, very, very important. Okay, I think we covered that. I'm so excited. I'm looking. These notes have been weeks old. I mean, months old now, I guess. I've been doing this series a while. I'm just looking through where we're going to go, and I'm very excited. So let's review, in finality, the gospel. So God created the world. Adam and Eve, through their own free will and being deceived by the serpent, entered into sin, broke covenant relationship with God, now separated because God is holy and cannot be in relationship with sin. Do you see how if Jesus didn't take on the wrath of God, we would not have relationship with the Lord? Like we wouldn't be able to have relationship with God if Jesus hadn't done that. Do you, so you see why the attack on that specific part of the gospel, that's when I realized I'm shutting this down. And I did. Prayed, you know, did what I felt led by the Lord to do, but also like this is not going to be permissible here because you are actually against the gospel, and that is not to be tolerated. So there's more to all of this. Check out my statement of faith on my website if you wanna see like a full breakdown of who the Father is, who Jesus is, who Holy Spirit is, who God is, what sin is, all of that. I just, I'm not gonna get into it. You can go to read it if you want, but this is what I want you to know about Jesus because everything about the gospel is about him. This is God coming to save the world from their sins, the world that he created, the people that he designed to worship him, but then fell away through their own sin and willingness to worship other gods. He comes to redeem them. So Jesus, this is what you need to know about Jesus. He's God's only son and our sole mediator. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
He is the exact representation of the Father. Now, this is all scripture. I'm literally just putting it in a paragraph. And he lived out the Father's will and heart for humanity perfectly. He only ever did what he saw the Father doing. So if you see it in Jesus, that's what the Father, that's who the Father is, that's who God is. Jesus showed us the Father's will for humanity through his anointing. He wants humanity to hear the gospel. He wants humanity to experience healing, all different kinds of healing, spiritual, emotional, physical, mental, all of it. And deliverance. Everyone that is bound by the serpent, by the enemy, by their own sinful patterns, he wants them delivered. So he preached and healed and delivered. That's his anointing. Look at Luke 4. Jesus has a name above all names. And then Luke 4 quotes Isaiah 61. 1. Jesus has a name above all names and has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. He gave that same authority to his followers so they could continue to bring his kingdom to earth. That's just, you have to understand, rabbis and disciples at Jesus' time, there is no question. And I'm going to cover authority because when you are taught a gospel that has no authority for the believer, it's false. It's just not, it's not even biblical. We're going to get there. You can see I get fired up about certain things. Um, so that they would continue to bring his kingdom to earth. Now, I say seasons in the vine, but the Bible upholds and seasons in the vine under the Bible upholds the belief in Jesus's pre-existence. He was before. He has always been. In the beginning was the word, right? His incarnation, God in flesh, a divine and human will merged into one, fully God, fully man. Huge. If there's too much humanity or too much deity, you lose the gospel power. You lose it. This is where false gospels are developed is when we focus on one part and not keeping it together. Deity and humanity perfectly, perfectly balanced. His virgin birth. It doesn't work if he wasn't born of a virgin because he was then born under the sin nature. He is perfect humanity. Totally. You got to know these things. We're going to get into them. And if you have questions about specific things, send them to me. Give me comments. Send me a message. He lived a sinless life. He was not a moral person. He was not a good teacher. All of that alone. You can't just say, yeah, he was a great teacher. Yeah, I understand some people felt. No, he was sinless, spotless lamb of God. That's who he is. He is the king. He is the Lord. I don't want to hear that he was a good teacher. Yeah, and then you missed a lot. They were saying that even in the scriptures. He must be a prophet. Who teaches like him? They missed who he really was. He was the long-awaited Messiah, the anointed one. He lived a sinless life. Sinless. That means he didn't even get tipsy when he had wine. Sinless. His substitutionary atonement. He died for us. He died as us. We are dead. He is alive. It's no longer I who live, but Christ. Let me only preach Christ and Christ crucified. Like everything is about that substitutionary atonement. We are atoned because he took our death for us and as us. His bodily resurrection from the dead, we're going to cover that. It's important. It's not a spiritual resurrection. It's a bodily resurrection. His body came out of the grave. It's a different kind of body. It's a resurrected body, glorified body, different kind of body because it went through walls and stuff and could just go places. But it was a body. It was his broken body that died, resurrected, not spiritual, like, it, you have to remember it's bodily. This is huge. That's a whole nother thing. His ascension to the right hand of the Father. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is coming back. So you have to know that. Part of the gospel message is he's coming back. He is coming back. He's seated. He has the highest authority. Look at Ephesians. Look at Colossians. Look at all that's under his feet. He is at the right hand of the Father. He sat down. His work was done. Our work was just beginning. Thanks to Holy Spirit. And he, he is coming back, his second coming. Okay, whew. That was a lot. Might be the longest Fresh Friday ever. Love you all. Sit in this. Read your Bible. Talk to Holy Spirit. He loves to tell you about Jesus. He loves to bring glory to Jesus. A high view of Jesus is required. You have to be able to begin to listen to when you're hearing something that is almost like Jesus, may even sound like Jesus, may even be quoting the Bible but is actually not the full gospel of Jesus. We need to be aware in these days. So much love. I'll see you next time.